In this video, I'm going to introduce the concept of the convolution between two functions. This is usually written mathematically as f of t with a little star uh, and h of t. This is the convolution of these two functions. And this is defined uh, by these two integrals, either one of these two integrals. And an interpretation of the convolution is it gives you a measure of how the shape of one function, for example, f, affects the, uh, the shape of another function, h of t. As a more physical example, we can consider a linear response model where the function capital R of t denotes the response of a system to some input or a stimulus, f of t. So for example, you uh, kick a ball, then the output of the system is uh, y of t is given by the convolution of the response function and the input function. And uh, as a small detail, in this context of a linear response model, the response function rt minus tau is usually zero for any time smaller than tau for uh, causality. So the system can't respond before it's received the input. However, this integral is oftentimes too difficult to calculate. So we would like to use Fourier transforms specifically to simplify the evaluation of this type of integral. So our motivation here is y of t, which is the convolution of these two functions. It's usually difficult to calculate. So what we're going to do instead is calculate the Fourier transform of y of t. So introducing a bit of new notation here. We're also going to denote the Fourier transform by a curly F with brackets and so it should be Y of T and our function. And by definition, this is one over two pi minus infinity to infinity, y of t times that, okay? So this is our Fourier transform, and now we're going to substitute the value of y of t by our convolution integral. So our convolution integral was capital R T minus tau, F of tau, tau. Then we have the rest of our Fourier transform out here. All right. And now we're going to separate our integrals into one integral with respect to the variable tau and another integral with respect to the variable t. So let's say out here, we have the integral with respect to tau because the function r depends on tau, we have to perform the integral with respect to t first. Okay, so all we've done is separated our integrals into these two uh, iterated integrals. And now we're going to, to be able to evaluate this integral, we're going to change variables. We're going to let t prime equal to t minus tau. 
this makes dt prime just equal to dt. All right, so then incorporating our new variables into this expression, we get that the Fourier transform of our output is equal to the following. So our integral with respect to tau remains the same for now. We changed our variables from dt to dt prime or t to t prime. So now we have capital R of t prime replacing this. And over here we substituted t by t prime plus tau. And now, because this integral is, respect, is with respect to t prime, we can uh, move this factor that has a tau in the exponent over to this integral. And now we're left with uh, with these two integrals. Each one of these now depends on a single variable. So here we only have functions of t prime, and here we only have functions of tau. And if we rewrite this in a slightly different way. We move the one over two pi over here. Then you can recognize this as the forward transform of capital R of T prime. which we'll denote by the same function with a little tilt on top as a function of omega. And then we're going to multiply uh, by two pi. And so we don't change our function. We're also going to divide by two pi. We have our integral with respect to tau over here. And then this term we have found was the Fourier transform of our response function. And now you can recognize this factor as the Fourier transform of our function f of tau. which will denote by f tilt of omega. Putting all of this together, we get that the Fourier transform of our output function is equal to two pi times the Fourier transform of our input or stimulus times the Fourier transform of our response function. So what we've done here is gone from a complicated integral to just a multiplication of two functions uh, over here. And the utility of this is we can compute the Fourier transform of y by finding the Fourier transform of these two functions and then calculating the inverse Fourier transform to ultimately find our function of interest y of t. And this result has the name convolution theorem, 
which says that the Fourier transform of the convolution of two functions under our convention, we pick up a factor of two pi that's equal to the product of the Fourier transforms of those two functions. And this is a, a very useful result in uh, performing certain computations more efficiently. An important thing to keep in mind is uh, under different uh, the conventions of the Fourier transform pairs, this factor of two pi uh, may differ and differ in, uh, depending on the source that you're looking at. Sometimes you will get a square root of two pi, sometimes it won't be there at all. So just something to keep in mind. In the next video, we'll move to uh, showing another important result of Fourier transform, transforms called Parseval's theorem.